Creative Continuity. We bring the convention to you. Creative Continuity at the Great Philadelphia Comic Con with Kerrigan Mayhem. We got you started in the wonderful world of acting. Third grade, I played the general store proprietor in a Old West thing, and I re realized in the third grade this is what I want to do. And so, junior high went from junior drama to senior drama, play production, and played Scrooge. Got five standing ovations, and I realized this is it. This is what I'm going to do. Awesome. And I never turned back from uh, junior high school all the way into college. I didn't last long with the college scene, and then I started doing um, uh, plays. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to New York. I studied, studied in L.A., studied in New York, and, and uh, did about, oh, I don't know, a couple small roles in movies, uh, some on-camera and TV shows, and then I kind of stepped into this voiceover thing by complete fluke, um, and I never turned back. From age 28, I've never had a regular job. There was a group of us that did anime, mm -hmm. like it goes back to the days of Robotech, all right, wow. And Tony Oliver, who played the lead in Robotech, Rick Hunter. We all did a lot of stuff over the years from mm -hmm. the mid-80s. So, you know, Saban wasn't even in the picture. Right. We were doing all our work through other, uh, other anime houses. And uh, then Saban was kind of discovered in about 90, I think. He came over and, and he'd, made his, uh, he'd made his thing with music. And uh, we did a lot of work for, uh, for Hyam, many, many anime cartoons before Power Rangers. So Tony actually wound up on the producing end of things by the time Power Rangers came about. And uh, <clears throat> the Power Rangers themselves all auditioned, of course. But our little troop of actors, Tony literally uh, assigned these roles to us. And we didn't think Goldar was going to be, be much of anything. Um, and then, uh, you know, episode 17 hit, and he said, you better get uh, get that voice straightened out because you're a big, huge character. You did VR Troopers, correct? Yeah. Now, that was out right around the time of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I think we were doing them simultaneous, I oh, think. Okay. I, oh, okay. Uh, I, I think VR came in about 95. Okay. And I was still doing Goldar. I would record Goldar... Well, sometimes I would record Goldar and we'd go right into VR Troopers. Wow. I'd finish up whatever I had to do with Goldar. And if I was doing a VR Troopers, we would certainly do the VR Troopers first because there was no strain whatsoever with that voice. I mean, I just basically plugged Jack Nicholson into, into the dog. War, neither side is innocent. You're still a traitor, you worthless piece. We were children. Asked to fight an intergalactic war against an enemy we'd never met. Let's stop pretending our side stood on some moral high ground. I guess my overall take on it is kind of like, um, what are y'all doing? You don't own this. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with Saban or... I mean, it seems kind of like a nice uh, lesson in futility. That's kind of my take on it. I just mm. don't get it. I didn't get it. Right, right. You know, I, I don't know what the controversy was. I think it was taken down because they didn't own it. Right. You know, it was unsanctioned. You've got to own the licensing to do that. Right. I mean, the fact that we get to come here and sign autographs and do the voice and everything, I think, you know, the Saban camp kind of, we've got no problem with that because it furthers... It just furthers the popular, po you know, the, right. po the popular aspects to the Power Rangers. So, but that thing apparently did not. Um, I hear the new movie is going to be a little darker, and I hear that Goldar is a huge lead in it. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know what I'll have to do with it. I don't know. Harold Gant, sign it off with Kerrigan Mayhem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. Right.